Yes, this is Sunset Boulevard, Los Angeles, California. It's about five o'clock in the morning. That's Homicide Squad, complete with detectives and internet gawkers. A murder has been reported from one of the big houses on the 2000 block. You'll read all about it on Facebook, I'm sure, because an old-time star is involved. One of the biggest. But before you hear it all distorted and blown all out of proportion, no, he did not die of COVID-19. Maybe you'd like to hear the facts, the whole truth. If so, you've come to the right party. You see, the body of a young man was found floating in the pool of her mansion with two shots in his back and one in his stomach. Nobody important, really. Just a movie writer with a couple of B pictures to his name. The poor dope. Let's go back about three months and see how this all started. You there! I had landed myself in the driveway of some big mansion that looked run down and deserted. At the end of the driveway was a lovely sight indeed. A great, big, empty garage. Just standing there going to waste. If there ever was a place to stash away a limping car with a hot license number. Why are you so late? Why have you kept me waiting so long? In here. I just put my car in the garage. I had a blowout, I thought- Go on in. Look, maybe I better take my car and- yeah, you, you, Wipe your feet. You're not dressed properly. Dressed for what? Uh, Max, have him come up. Max! If you need help with the coffin, call me. In here. I put him on the massage table by the fire. He always liked fires and poking at them with a stick. I made up my mind we'll bury him in the garden. Any city laws against that? I have no idea. Look, lady, you've got the wrong man. I'm not an undertaker. I had some trouble with my car, a uh, flat tire. I pulled into your garage till I could get a spare. I thought this was an empty house. It is not. Get out! I I'm sorry about your friend. I, I mean your pet chimpanzee. Was it COVID-19? You ask me such a question, of course not, and get out! Sure. Wait a minute, haven't I seen you? Or shall I call my servant? I know your face. You're Norma Desmond. You used to be in the pictures. You used to be big. I am big. It is the pictures that got small. Don't get sore at me. I'm not an executive. I'm just a writer. Get out! Next time I'll bring my autograph album along. Uh, just a minute, you! Uh, uh, what's your name? Yeah, Joe Gillis. Why? You're a writer. And you have written pictures? I want to ask you something. I am working on a script. I want Mr. DeMille to direct it once this whole COVID-19 thing blows over. This is to be a very important picture. I have written it myself. It took me years. I didn't know you were planning to come back. I hate that word. It is a return. A return to the millions of people who have never forgiven me for deserting the screen. I have a proposal for you, Joe Gillis. You will need money to fix your car, so stay here and help me with my screenplay. I will make it worth your while. Max, set up Joe in the room over the garage. Here you go, sir. I made your bed this afternoon. Thanks. How'd you know I was going to stay this afternoon? Hmm. This room has not been used for a very long time. 
There is the bathroom, and there is soap and a toothbrush. <laughs> Say, she's quite a character, that Norma Desmond. She was the greatest. You wouldn't know you are too young. In one week, she got 17,000 fan letters. Men would be bribing her manicurist for just some clippings of her fingernails. And once, there was a prince who came all the way from Saudi Arabia just for one of her scarves. And later, he hanged himself with it. I sure turned into an interesting driveway. Ah, yes, sir, you did. Oh, and by the way, did you hear some news? Due to the COVID-19, we are to be sheltering in place indefinitely. So I have arranged for all of your belongings to be brought here. Welcome to your new home, Mr. Gillis. <laughs> what? Well, since this crazy broad wants me to pay to be pay me to be her ghostwriter and I'm stuck here, I might as well make the best of it. Joe? Yes, Norma? Sit down and get to work. We have a script to edit. Max, bring us some champagne. Yes, madame, right away. I recommend you listen to the great lady when she speaks. Well, I had no pressing engagement, and she'd mentioned something to drink. Sometimes it's interesting just to see how bad, bad writing can be. I wondered what a handwriting expert would make of that childish scrawl of hers. Max wheeled in some champagne and caviar. Later, I found out that Max was the only other person in that grim sunset castle. This is fascinating. Of course it is. Maybe it's a little too long and maybe there are some repetitions, but you're not a professional writer. I, I wrote it with my heart. I'm sure you did. That's what makes it great. What it needs is a little more dialogue. <laughs> what for? I can say anything I want with my eyes. Have you seen my old films? They are still wonderful. And no dialogue. We didn't need dialogue. We had faces. There just aren't any faces like that anymore. Uh oh, well, maybe one garbo. And so the days turn into weeks, and the weeks turn into months, and we finally sent that sad excuse of a screenplay to Paramount. Good luck, I thought. And then one day I got a call from Paramount, but it wasn't about Norma's script. It was about one of my own, one I had nearly forgotten about. Hello? Hello. Is this Joe Gillis? Yes. Who wants to know? I'm Betty Schaefer. I work with Mr. Sheldrake at Paramount. One of your scripts has come across my desk, and I'd like to discuss it with you. Well, that is good news. Your script, face is loaded. It's just terrible. A, a rehash of something that wasn't very good to begin with. It's flat and banal. <laughs> Wait a minute. You called me to insult my writing? Exactly what do you recommend? James Joyce? I just think a picture should say a little something. Oh, you're, you're one of the message kids. Uh, just a story won't do. <laughs> Well, perhaps the reason I hated Bases Loaded is that I knew your name. I'd always heard you had some talent. So that brings me to the reason I am calling, Mr. Gillis. I have an idea for a screenplay, and I think you would be the right person to help me write it. Because of COVID-19, I know we can't meet face to face, but maybe we can work together over Zoom. I'm free every evening. I think we would make a good team. I think we could write something meaningful together. I don't want to be a reader forever. I want to write screenplays, and I know you want to as well, so 
I thought we could help each other out. What do you say? Uh, Joe! Uh, I'll think about it. Uh, can I Zoom you later tonight? I gotta go right now. I'm, I'm kind of in the middle of something. 10 p.m. tonight, okay? Joe? A uh, Joe? A uh, Joe, where are you? I need to talk to you. It's important. Uh, Norma, I'll be right there. I'm just uh, getting changed. Perfect, Betty. I, I gotta go. Talk to you soon. Uh, bye. Here I am, Norma. S sorry to keep you waiting. What did you need, my dear? Uh, Joe, my love, come sit with me and let's watch some of my old films together. <laughs> they were silent movies and Max would run the projection machine. She would sit very close to me and she'd smell of tube roses, which is not my favorite perfume, not by a long shot. Sometimes as we watch, she'd clutch my arm or my hand, forgetting that she was my employer. <clears throat> Madame is wanted on the telephone. You know better than to interrupt me. Paramount is calling. Who? Paramount Studios. Now do you believe me? I told you DeMille would jump at it. It is not DeMille, actually. It is an uh, assistant. He says it's very important. Certainly it's important. It's important enough for Mr. DeMille to call me personally. The idea of having an assistant call me. I myself was surprised at Mr. DeMille's manners. Say I'm busy and hang up. Uh, very good, madam. Maybe DeMille is shooting. I know that trick. He's trying to belittle me. He's trying to get my price down. I've waited 20 years for this call. Now Mr. DeMille can wait till I'm ready. Till I'm good and ready to Zoom. About three days later, she was good and ready to Zoom. Incredible as it may seem, there had been more of those calls from Paramount. So she put on a half pound of makeup, fixed it up with a veil, and set forth to Zoom DeMille. If, if you will pardon me, madame, the, the shadow of the left eye is not quite balanced. Thank you, Max. I am off to the library to Zoom Mr. DeMille. Joe, do you want to come along, darling? I don't think so. It's your script. It's your Zoom. Good luck. Thank you, darling. <laughs> What's the matter, Max? I just found out why all those telephone calls it is not Miss Desmond's that Paramount wants. It is her vast supply of toilet paper. What? Madame is going to be devastated. Good news! Mr. Jamil wants to direct my picture. I will star and protect. Deuce, it will be wonderful. I've got to get myself ready. There's so much to do. My face, it must be perfect. What just happened, Max? I'm confused. Uh, Madame can be a bit delusional at times. De DeMille must have let her down easy. He, he must have just said they... They will talk more later, and, and Madame took it as a done deal. Oh, she is fragile. I worry about her. There have been past attempts, suicide attempts. We must appease her. 
sure, you are worried about her and we're not helping her, feeding her lies and more lies, getting herself ready for a picture. What happens when she finds out? She never will. That is my job. It has been my job all along. You must understand, it was I who discovered her when she was 18. I made her a star. I cannot let her be destroyed. You made her a star? I directed all her early pictures. In those days, there were just three directors who showed promise. DeMille, Griffith, and Max von Meyerling. And she's turned you into a servant? But it was I who asked to come back, as, as humiliating as it seems. I could have gone on with my career, only I found everything unendurable after she divorced me. Yes, you see, I was her first husband. The quarantine was really getting to me. I was stuck in this rotting old house with two delusional people. I could not leave, but I could work on a real quality script with Betty. So we began working on Zoom every night. And the more we worked together, the more we realized we liked each other a lot. Joe, let's take a break. We are not getting anywhere with this scene. Sure, Betty. Well, I thought it has good dialogue. It'll play. It will? <clears throat> sure. Especially with a lot of music underneath drowning it out. <laughs> Don't you hate yourself sometimes? Constantly. <laughs> no, in all seriousness. It's really good. It's fun writing again. I'm happy on our Zoom meetings. Honest I am. Norma. Who's who? I'm sorry. I don't usually eavesdrop, but when we were on the phone today, it sounded like you were talking to someone named Norma. Funny. I assumed you had lived alone. Oh, Norma. Uh, she's just a friend of mine. I, I was on Zoom with her when you called me. She's just a middle-aged lady who I met before all this happened. I gave her some advice on an idiotic script and now I can't seem to shake her. Oh, it's that old familiar story. You help a timid little old soul with her script. She turns out to be a multimillionaire and leaves you all her money. That's the trouble with you readers. You know all the plots. Now, can we get back to work, please? Sometimes when we got stuck, we would play a game of show and tell. We would each share a personal item and share a story from our past. We would talk about what life was before COVID-19. During this particular show and tell, Betty shared a picture of her father. Turns out he was head electrician at Paramount and she grew up playing on the lot. <sighs> I always loved playing on the empty street, all cardboard, all hollow, all phony, all done with mirrors. I like it better than any street in the world. What were you, a, a child actress? I was born two blocks from the studio. My mother still worked in wardrobe till COVID-19 shut everything down. My grandmother was even a stunt woman. I come from a picture family. Naturally, they took it for granted that I was to become a great star. So I had 10 years of dramatic lessons, diction, dancing. Then the studio made a test. Well, they did not like my nose. I went to a doctor and had it fixed. They made more tests and they were crazy about my nose. <laughs> Only they did not like my acting. Nice job. Should be. 
It costs three hundred dollars. <laughs> Saddest thing I've ever heard. Not at all. It taught me a little sense. I got me a job in the mailroom, worked my way to the office, to office assistant. Now I am a reader. Come clean, Betty. At night, you weep for those lost close-ups, those gala openings. Not once. What's wrong with being on the other side of the cameras? It's really more fun. Well, three cheers for Betty Schaefer. If we were in the same room, I'd kiss that nose of yours. I wish you could. You are really amazing. How old are you? 22. That's it. There's nothing like being 22. Uh, now, may I suggest we get back to writing because if we keep on like this, I may say something else romantic. And we certainly don't want any of that. I don't think I can concentrate on writing at the moment. Perhaps we should call it a night. I understand. We did a lot of work today and we should sleep on this draft. We can revisit it tomorrow. Good night, Betty. Good night, Joe. One, were you just on Zoom? Is it a woman? <gasps> I know it's a woman. Oh, who is she? Oh, Joe, I must know. I must. It's nothing. I mean, yes, I was talking to a woman, but it was all business, though. I'm working on a script with her. You can't complain about this. I ghost write for you, and I'm stuck here for God knows how long. I have the right to pursue other professional opportunities. You have betrayed me, Joe. How could you, after everything I have done for you? <laughs> At this point in the story, the madame is overcome with jealousy and grief. She attempts to take her own life by trying to eat an entire container of Clorox wipes. Max, being the attentive servant, however, found her in time and foiled the attempt. It's pathetic, really. This isn't the first time Max had to prevent a tragedy. This is a point in the story where everything just goes to hell in a handbasket. As Norma is recovering in bed, she has Max bring her my cell phone, and Norma calls Betty. Joe? This is not Joe. Well, who are you? And why do you have Joe's phone? Miss Schaefer, you must forgive me for calling so late, but I really feel it's my duty. It's about Mr. Gillis. Do you know Mr. Gillis? Exactly how much do you know about him? Do you know where he lives? Do you know how he lives? Do you know what he lives on? Who are you? And what do you want? What business is it of yours anyway? Miss Schaefer, I am trying to do you a favor. I am trying to spare you a great deal of misery. Of course, you may be too young to even suspect there are men of his sort. I don't know what he's told you, but he does not live with relatives, more friends in the usual sense of the word. Ask him. Ask him. Again. Norma, give me the phone. That's right, Betty. Ask me again. Joe, where are you? What's this all about? Or maybe it would be better if you saw for yourself. I'll zoom you. Give me a sec. Don't hate me, Joe. I did it because I need you. I need you like I've never needed you. Look at my face under my eyes. 
how can I go back to work after this whole COVID disaster is behind us if I am wasting away under this torment? You don't know what I've been through these past weeks. I got myself a revolver. You don't believe me, but it's true. I stood in front of the mirror, only I couldn't do it. It wouldn't be fair to all those people who are waiting to see me return to the screen. I can't disappoint them. Hello, Betty. Well, this is where I live. Uh, whose house is it? Hers. Whose? <laughs> Look behind me. There's a lot of her spread about. Her pictures are everywhere. If you don't remember the face, you must have heard the name of Norma Desmond. That was Norma Desmond on the phone? Yes, she called you because she is jealous. Why are you there? I'm trying to tell you. It's lonely here, so she got herself a companion. A very simple setup, an older woman who is well-to-do, a younger man who is not doing too well, and then add the quarantine, it's a match made in heaven. Can you figure it out yourself? No, no, I haven't heard any of this. I never got that phone call. I've never seen you on Zoom in this house. Get your things and go outside. I can pick you up in 10 minutes. You need to get out of that place. Come on, Joe. Look, sweetie, uh, be practical. I I've got a good thing here, a long-term contract with no options. I like it that way. Maybe it's not very admirable, but it's all I got. Joe, I can't look at you anymore. Nobody asked you to. We're through. I'm ending this Zoom. Your script and your life will be much better without me. Goodbye, Betty. Knock, knock. May I come in? I stopped crying. I'm all right again. Oh, Joe, tell me you are not cross. Tell me everything is just as it was, Joe. What are you doing, Joe? You're not leaving me. Yes, I am, Norma. No, you are not. Max, Max. Max is a good idea. He can help me with the luggage. You can't do this. Max, Max. I can't face life without you, and I'm not afraid to die, you know. That's between you and yourself, Norma. You think I made it up about the gun? See, you didn't believe me. Now I suppose you don't think I have the courage. Oh, sure, if it would make a good scene. You don't care, do you? But hundreds and thousands of people will care. There aren't any fan letters, except the ones Max writes himself. Go on, ask him. That isn't true, Max. Madame is the greatest star of them all. You heard him? I'm a star. Norma, grow up. You're a woman of 50. There's nothing tragic about being 50. Not unless you try to be 25. I'm the greatest star of them all. Goodbye, Norma. No one leaves a star. You're not leaving me. Joe! Joe! What happens next? I leave the house and she follows me through the yard, brandishing that pistol. Three shots are fired, and I fall lifeless into the swimming pool. Back where all this started. 
The place is swarming with detectives, and Max is stuck with the thankless job of luring a delusional Norma to them. Madame, the, the, the newsmen have arrived to interview you about your next picture. A camera? Oh, what is it, Max? What about social distance and quarantine? Oh, madame, you have been deemed essential, so precautions have been taken. Oh, excellent! I'll get ready for my scene. Lights! Are you ready, Norma? What is the scene? Where am I? This is the staircase to the palace. Yes, yes, they are below, waiting for the princess. So, they were grinding after all those cameras. Life, which can be so strangely merciful, has taken pity on Norma Desmond. The dream that she had so desperately clung on to has enfolded her. the scene. I'm too happy. Uh, can I say a few words? Thank you. I just want to say how happy I am to be back in the studio making a picture again. I'm so happy we all survived the pandemic. You don't know how much I've missed all of you. You see, this is my life. It always will be. There's nothing else. Just us. And the cameras. And those beautiful people out there in the dark. All right, Mr. DeMille. I am ready for my close-up.